Assalamu alaikum dear audience this is Sanobra Sultan and here you are watching another video on Sanobra's world so today the topic of discussion is uh, the most famous portrait in the world which is of the Mona Lisa by the genius Leonardo da Vinci who was not just a painter but a scientist among other things it took him over 10 years to make this portrait beginning in 1503 and he carried his masterpiece with him till death this portrait of mona lisa has been the spectacle upon which the eyes of curators and all audiences have written so much about that did you know that the Mona Lisa portrait once hung in the bedroom of Napoleon Bonaparte? Now to um, describe a bit about the working method of da Vinci when drawing this portrait, Mona Lisa was actually the wife of a wealthy silk merchant there are a few things to be noted when you look at the Mona Lisa. And now assuming that everybody has looked at it, um, images. Now I'm going to numerically say, what are the things that are instantly recognizable when you look at the Mona Lisa? The first thing is what you will notice. Mona Lisa, unlike the portraits of other aristocrats of her time is not wearing bejeweled or colorful clothes. She is actually wearing a very plain monotone color of black, although the fabric looks expensive. Okay, so that is the first thing. The second thing what you will realize is uh, Mona Lisa is not wearing any jewelry, unlike the other aristocratic portraits of her time. The third thing that you will notice is the Mona Lisa is looking directly at you. It is as if she's making eye contact with you. It is like she's smiling at you, as if her eyes follow you wherever you go and her pose is uh, not a side pose okay so it's not like she's looking here she's looking there she is um looking straight at you which is again unlike the portraits that were made of women at that time okay and the fourth thing that you will um, notice again when you look at the portrait is uh, Mona Lisa is looking very self-assured and confident, which is in those times were portraits at how men were painted, not how women were portrayed in Italy at that time. The fifth thing that you will notice when you will uh, when you look at the Mona Lisa is that her portrait is a three by fourth of her body. So it is not a full um, portrait in a standing position. It is not, you know, just of her face. It is actually a three by fourth portrait of her in a sitting position which was again groundbreaking because uh, women were not portrayed at that time in a sitting position in a three by fourth um, portrait. And the last thing which is when you look um, at the portrait is you will notice that in the background of Mona Lisa is this vivid natural and detailed scenic paintings which uh, is actually the imagination of da Vinci, the scenic beauty in the background of, of the portrait of Mona Lisa. So this is, you know, when you look at Mona Lisa, these are the first 
few recognizable things that come to your head. Now, to come to the technique of Da Vinci, is what is the method of drawing that Da Vinci used for this specific portrait of Mona Lisa? Well, Da Vinci uses the technique of shadow and light, where the Mona Lisa, the outline of her body is highlighted as the light and it's looking very lifelike while the background of Mona Lisa is in the shadow which when you will see is the uh, natural beauty which has been painted again in very detail um, that he has done it now this technique of shadow and light is actually a form of texture known as implied texture which means the way an object looks is as if this is how it would feel if uh, you came up to it. I mean, for example, the softness of her hands, the way her hands are positioned, Mona Lisa, it looks as if they're real hands. So um, that's one part of the technique. Now, another highlighted important aspect that has left the audiences captivated for centuries is um, the smile of Mona Lisa. And when you look at her, um, at her smile, the observers have noted uh, two things. The first is, which is, it looks as if she's smiling at you. But the second thing is, when you look at her again, it looks as if she's smirking or her smile is mocking. And then you look again and it's going to look like, no, I think she's smiling. So how did Da Vinci come up with such a smile? Well, the answer is uh, da vinci apart from being a painter was also a pioneer in the field of medicine he would study cadavers which is the study of anatomy of dead bodies and there are diaries of da vinci where he has written pages and pages of detailed study of the human jaw um, its nerves and from that study of the human jaw of human anatomy he was able to come up with a scientifically perfected method of drawing the smile of Mona Lisa. Now another very noteworthy thing is uh, the eyes of Mona Lisa. You know there are detailed notes of da Vinci where he studied the retina of the human eye and thus based on exact mathematical calculations he was able to portray those eyes of Mona Lisa. You know um, now that we have discussed the Mona Lisa over the centuries you will see that there have been many variants of paintings and genres such as calligraphy, abstract painting, or most recently the groundbreaking work of Picasso who pioneered the method of cubism. But now since the late 1980s there has been a new form of expression, expressionism in art, um, the most famous being the movement of the young British artists, which when you will search, it seems to me as less a form of art and more an expression of representing a new form of art as a denial of what art has stood for centuries. Now, to put it very simplistically, um, for example, you go to a museum and it's going to sound very layman like, but very crudely, this is what it is. You go to a museum and there is an empty frame and you 
wonder what is there to look at except the curator or the new genre of artist would say well there is a painting you just can't see it you just don't have the eye to appreciate what is on the frame even though the frame is empty um it's a blank frame and well you like okay i guess this is a new form of um new form of art that is basically you're supposed to look at an empty frame and uh, it's just we can't see the art okay so another very famous example from the genre of the young british artists um was an expression of art when there were bricks which were assembled together and the artist called it a piece of art so uh, you know for somebody a layman it would basically just bricks put together but the artist said well this is a piece of art you just can't appreciate it so you know you better just keep mum and say okay i guess this is a new form of art that has come over come up so you know coming from the standard of da vinci and many other famous um, painters that have existed over the centuries to this i would say the current trend in art is so passionate to deny the masterpiece of those famous paintings that you create an expression of art and say this is art and you just can't understand it okay well i think time has proven that mona lisa remains the most famous and recognizable portrait in the world and continues to captivate all those who have seen the mastery of da vinci so um that was the video for today ladies and gentlemen and uh, i shall see you all very soon on snobber's world till then bye bye